and that's Reverend Jerry Falwell. Reverend, welcome to the Savage Nation. So happy to have you with us. Well, thank you, good friend, for inviting me back. I'd like to discuss the passion with you. The message I have of what the crucifixion means, and it's not, it's, to be honest with you, Reverend, I never really thought about what the crucifixion means, you know. But after the movie, I've been forced to ask myself, what does the crucifixion mean? And to me, it means if you crucify others, you crucify yourself. Does that hold any water with you, that analysis? Certainly can be an interpretation, but the ultimate um, uh, meaning of the cross is that God so loved the world, everyone in it, black, white, red, yellow, Jew, Gentile, rich, poor, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Christ, to die on that cross to pay our sin debt in full forever, and only perfect God, perfect man, and one person could do that. Well, here's the part I don't understand. How could how could Jesus have died for all man's sins for all time when such evil exists? Does that exonerate them? That exonerates a child rapist? Because, first of all, he is uh, uh, the Son of God and God the Son, perfect man, perfect God. Theologians refer to him as the God-man. And because he is the God-man, he was able to take upon himself, only God could do that, in, a, uh, in an efficacious way, the sins of everyone from Adam to the last person that shall ever be born upon this earth, past, present, future. And when he said, it is finished on the cross, uh, it, uh, it meant just that. I have paid the debt in full. I have satisfied my heavenly Father. My blood is shed. I have risen now from the dead alive forevermore, and all who trust me have everlasting life. But what I don't understand in that theological viewpoint is, does that wipe away other people's sins? Well, uh, he, 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 I, I put it this way. The death of Christ is sufficient to save all men everywhere. It is efficient to save only those who believe and receive him. So can a non-Christian be saved? Not unless you trust Christ. I, the, the John five twenty four, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. One must receive Christ. That's not anti-Semitic. It's not anti-Gentile. There are many Baptists who have not received Christ. They may be church members and have been baptized, but have never personally received the atonement, Christ, death, burial, resurrection for our sins, as Lord and Savior, it's a person. Oh, wait a minute, but what, what you said is only those who have received Christ can be uh, received. And that, that is the teaching of Scripture, that Christ died for all men. But in that, but in that sense, uh, Christianity would be very, very exclusive of all other religions, wouldn't it? Well, it's, it's inclusive in that God so loved everyone in the world and wants no one to go to hell. He sent his only begotten Son to die for us. It is exclusive in that those who reject him, who do not believe upon him, who do not receive him, are lost. So then the Jews are lost, the Muslims are lost, the Buddhists are lost, and the Hindus are lost by that view. Baptists, Catholics, Methodists, pre anyone, uh, church membership is not enough, baptism is not enough, good works is not enough. The scripture said it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy have he saved us. Well, I, we'd have to disagree on that theological viewpoint because I certainly can't exclude billions of people who are decent people who have never hurt anybody, in fact, who have done good, who are not receiving Christ, who are still decent people. Well, if, if it were good works, uh, you'd be right. But uh, it, unfortunately, not all of our the Scripture says it this way, all our righteousness is as filthy rags. That is, it, man cannot do enough. To satisfy a holy God, Christ came and in his own death, burial, resurrection, paid the sin debt in full forever for everyone. All we need to do is believe on him, trust in him. But the fact is, he made it clear for him uh, for all time that all we like sheep have gone astray. Romans uh, 6.23. All we like sheep have gone astray. Uh, Isaiah 53.6. But the Lord hath laid on him, Christ, the iniquity of us all. We all are sinners, all need a new birth, all need an experience, a personal one with Christ, and that is what uh, Calvary is, and that's what the empty tomb is. Well, again, it's kind of exclusive of other religions, and we'll let it go with that. I don't mean to challenge your faith. I just don't thoroughly accept that viewpoint. 
uh, at all because I'd have to say that all Jews are not evolved, all Muslims are not evolved, all Buddhists are not evolved, all Hindus and all fallen people, I mean all non-religious people, but I can't accept that because I've seen uh, religious people who are pure evil and I've seen non-religious people who are pure good. I mean, just as a human being, Reverend, we can't say that everyone who's not a Christian is not a full person, can we? Well, uh, religion is not enough. There, there are many religious people who call themselves Christians or whatever, but religion is not enough. There's got to be a personal relationship with Christ, the Son of God and God the Son, through the new birth and through believing in and accepting his death in our behalf, his resurrection on our behalf. It is a personal experience, the new birth it's called. And again, many Jews have received Christ. Uh, many Protestants have received Christ. It uh, has nothing to do with color or ethnic or religion. Well, well, what do you mean by many Jews have received Christ? You mean by converting to Christianity? By receiving uh, many Messianic Jews uh, all over the world, thousands of them. And uh, But wait, what about the millions of Jews who don't accept Jesus? Are they lesser people? Is that what you're saying? Protestants, and it uh, it is not that God has condemned anybody. God has offered through his Son salvation to everyone. We are the ones who reject him. Well, let's leave it at that. I, ter- I, I can't accept that viewpoint, because if I do, it means that everybody else is lesser than a, than a received Christian. Uh, and that sounds very much like the, the limitations of Islam, who say that unless you follow my way, uh, you, unless you follow the way of Allah, you know, you have to be converted. You see, this is the theological bind uh, that that kind of extremism puts us in, Reverend. Well, that is the message of the Bible. It's the message of uh, the four Gospels. It's, it's the eternal message of Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, John fourteen six. Well, we'll let it go at that because I respect you as a man and as a religious man. I just don't accept that theological viewpoint, frankly. But I, I really do appreciate you taking the time, Reverend Falwell, for being with us on The Savage Nation. Well, that was quite an exciting conversation. It didn't go where the Reverend thought it would go nor where I thought it would go. We're now hearing what? That Jews and Methodists and Muslims and Buddhists are not full people because they haven't accepted Christ? This is an amazing statement. It's unacceptable to me. You see, I don't see the world that way, and I've said that to you before. I I may as well tell you how I see the world if you want to know one man's opinion. And don't think I'm holding myself up as some expert. But in my travels around the world, I have met good people and bad people in all faiths and in none faiths. I've met good people of every race and bad people of every race. I've met good gay people and I've met bad gay people. I've met good straight people and bad straight people. We know that, but I have to repeat that. But I also see the religion in this way. And I've I've written this up 30 years ago. I see all of the world's religions as equal, by, by the way. Because I don't want to deny the other man's view of the world in order to have my own view of the world. I don't think it's necessary for me to say the other man isn't as complete as me because he doesn't practice my my route to God. If you imagine a wheel, and if you imagine the hub of the wheel, and draw the circles from now in your head. I don't care if you're in a car. Draw a big circle, that's the outside of the wheel. And draw a little circle, that's the inside of the wheel. The inside of the wheel is the hub. And that hub is God. That's the center of the wheel of the universe where God exists. And out of that hub, there arise spokes to hold the outside of the wheel. And each of those spokes is a religion. And there may be five or six principal religions on earth, Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Islam. And to me, the five major religions of the world are the five spokes of the wheel of man. And these five spokes all lead mankind to the center, and that is God. Now, if you want to make me a prophet for saying that, then make me a prophet, because maybe the world needs someone to say that we can all be equal. We do not need to exclude the other man because he practices a different religion. That's how Michael Savage sees it. Savage.